This is episode two of my lecture, Contra Structural Racism. So I want to think now about a definition of structural racism. And I have this book called White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. And she's a consultant and trainer on issues of racial and social justice for over 20 years, um, a corporate trainer. And listen to her de definition. <coughs> listen to this definition. I've written it out here. I'll read it to you. Ready? White supremacy in this context does not refer to individual white people and their individual intentions or actions, but to an overarching political, economic, and social, social system of domination. One more time a overarching political, economic, and social system of domination. Now, she doesn't use the word structural racism in that sentence. She uses the word white supremacy. And uh, whether this is tr true or not, that's a t terrible word to use. White supremacists are people who believe that black people and white people should not be racially mixed. Those are the people, the KKK today, the, the Aryan Brotherhood, the, the neo-Nazis. It, it was all white people in the 1930s and 40s, right? All, not all Southern white people, but almost all Southern white people. So I don't think we should use that word. And she reuses a word that is full of meaning, and she uses it to mean it's structural racism. Again, l listen to what she says. White supremacy, so I'm, I think she means structural racism, so I'm going to re reuse structural racism. Structural racism in this context does not refer to individual white people and their individual intentions or actions, but to an overarching political, economic, and social system of domination. See, her whole point in this white fragility is it's not about you, the individual, being racist, but it's about the system being racist. So I would like to go back to the one that I did at first. So let's read, shall we, um, this definition of structural racism that the Aspen Institute put out. So I'm going to read it one more time and then let's t talk about it. Structural racism is not something that a few people or institutions choose to practice. That's what she said, right? Instead, it has been a feature of the social, economic, and political systems in which we all exist. It is a system in which public policies, institutional practices, cultural representations, and other norms work in the various, often reinforcing ways to perpetuate racial group inequity. So unlike uh, her, it doesn't talk about domination, it talks about uh, inequities. And uh, the, uh, the first thing I would ask of this de definition uh, is how do we know structural racism is true? You're saying it's it's an uh, economic, social, and political system in which we all exist and public policies, institutional practices. Uh, and the answer I think people would say is, well, there is racial group inequity. And that's absolutely true. You can take black and white folk and, and, and look at any statistic. The white folk are going to have a, a better outcome than the black folk on almost every statistic. What causes this, you might ask? Th their answer is structural racism, and my thought is, uh, would you prove, mind proving that? That's an interesting theory, but I don't know th that I'm buying it just because you s said so. And we're going to look at the proof t t in the next episode, but let's think about this for a moment. Did we have structural racism? Uh, before 1865, and the answer is yes, it was actually called slavery, right? We didn't call it structural racism. Did we have structural racism between 1865 and 1965? And the answer is absolutely. We had laws and, 
and, and norms in, in, in the South especially, which segregated and which uh, and they were a, a, a political, a, economic, and, and social, I would agree. So let's go to 1976, okay? So ten years have passed since the signing of the of the Civil Rights Bill uh, and the Voting Rights Act of 60, uh, 64 and the Voting Rights Act of 65. It's 1976. There are now 14 uh, congressmen of color, black congressmen, I'm sorry, black congressmen, including uh, Barbara Jordan, uh, and, and she gives a, that amazing speech, YouTube Barbara Jordan impeachment speech. Oh, it's, uh, it's an amazing speech. She's from Houston. Um, there's one black Republican senator from Massachusetts. Fast forward another 10 years to 86, another 10 years uh, to 2006. Did I do that right? 76, 86, I'm sorry, 86, 96, 2006, 30 years. Go 40 years to, 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 to 2016, or come all the way to the present, 2020. We have had two black uh, 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 cabinet members, uh, and the name's escaping me, uh, Department of State, uh, Secretaries of State, sorry. We've had two black Secretaries of State. We've had black mayors, black governors, black uh, president. We've had, in Houston, the city of Houston, we've had two black governors, black police chief. Actually, our HISD board, uh, the, the school board, has only one white person on it. Now, if you were to say to me, I think... Mr. Horn, that though things have gotten better, there are still ghosts and cobwebs and shadows of racism in your political, economic, and social structures. And I would say, yeah, you're probably right. I'm not going to, I don't think things have gotten 100% better. I don't think it's, everything's great. The question, though, is, is that is that what is causing the inequity or not? See, I, I tend to think that, no. I tend to think that inequity is, is really complicated. It's not as easy as, as, well, not that this is easy, but it's not as easy as one thing, structural racism, and then I don't understand exactly what you mean by structural racism. Are you saying we have to completely uh, overhaul our political, economic, and social uh, systems? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to say, well, I think that's a p p political thing. How much time do I have? Let's talk about this real quickly. So, first thing, uh, if you're saying, if you're hypothesizing that there is a thing called structural racism, if this is your hypothesis, right? Structural racism is 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 a feature of the social, economic, and political systems. It's uh, and it perpetuates racial group inequities. Okay, if that's your hypothesis, I presume you are doing uh, social science. Uh, and at the beginning of the 20th century, 100 years ago, 120 years ago. Uh, Americans and, and Europeans were so excited because all the progress that had been made in the hard sciences, f biology and physics and chemistry, and of course there was more to come, but we had done a lot, would now be uh, applied to people and, and these new uh, uh, sciences in 1900, there were new psychology and economics and political science and sociology would change everything and make everyone better. Well, that hasn't happened, by the way. Um, but if you're doing the social science, then I would presume you have to look at this and test this. And that's what we're going to do next e episode. So we'll sign off here.